If you have your Bibles, and I trust that you do tonight, turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter number 5, and verse number 10, we're going to be looking at. We're going to look at several of these verses. Um, well, let me just start at verse number 3 and just look at this. And I want to focus on verse number 10, and uh, then we're going to bounce back even uh, to verse number 8. Jesus, uh, blessed, uh, or what is out of the word for blessed? Happy. Happy are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted of God. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which, uh, which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Uh, here in, in the realm of righteousness, isn't speaking of self-righteousness, but it's speaking of God's righteousness. Uh, we, we probably all met folks who are self-righteous because they feel that they've obtained or they've done something to be righteous uh, outside of religious boundaries or outside of godly boundaries. Or we've also probably met some who are self-righteous because they feel like that because of things that they've done, their works, their, their works of righteousness, that they are righteous. That's not what the Word of God is talking about. It's not talking about persecuted for uh, self-righteousness, but for God's righteousness. The Bible says, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Praise God. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you. Say all manner of evil against you falsely, for my sake, he said, for my sake, any time that you are serving God, I just want you to be aware, uh, straight up front, that people will speak evil simply because they are an enemy of the cross. They may not say that they're an enemy of, of the cross, but if they don't understand salvation and they've not had a, 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 a rebirth, if they've not had an, an eye-opening understanding through the Spirit to the Word of God, there's lots of people who try to tell me what the Word of God is, and there's lots of folks who tell me, you take the Word of God too literal. It's not, they're not saved. I'm not living by their standard. I'm living by what the standard of the Word of God is, and what the Spirit of God has opened and enlightened my eyes to see. Rejoice! And be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Amen. And the fact that God's way is going to bring persecution. Hold on to your seat. By the world and sometimes by the church. I want to look at that for a few minutes tonight. This month, I've been focusing on that of sanctification and starting this new year off with allowing our lives to be sanctified through the Spirit of God. And so, as we are saved, as you seek earnestly, <clears throat> earnestly and diligently after God, I, I'm just going to tell you that there's an epidemic in the world against those who pursue righteousness and all of this. You're going to be persecuted. You're going to be misunderstood. You're going to be ostracized. You're going to be made fun of. So how do we deal with this? Somewhere in the, the middle of things, um, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, but somewhere in the middle of serving God, Folks have come into a strange gospel that says serving God means that there's nothing but absolute favor, absolute joy, absolute everything going right. 
That's a lie from the pit of hell. And so persecution, you know, we have liberalness that is advancing in, in, in areas of communication in our world. And so communication is powerful. And with liberal communication, it makes it even more difficult for those who are trying to serve and please God in righteousness. In fact, you may have recently seen where um, Franklin Graham um, took some heat um, from Hollywood. But he was willing to stand up for what was righteous and uh, uh, talk about righteousness. So I appreciate those men and women. So let's first, let's look at the character of persecution. Uh, the word persecution uh, in our text deals in about three different areas uh, of, of, of what it is to be uh, persecuted. The first thing is the pursuit of persecution. As you see, it, 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 is, it, it is to pursue, it's to follow after, it is to chase. Persecution is aggressive. It's not passive, but it is aggressive. And uh, it hunts down the victim. And uh, uh, Paul, uh, uh, he knew all about this. He knew what it was like to feel the, the, the conversion of the Spirit of God and meet Jesus on the road to Damascus. And was life pleasant and wonderful after that Damascus experience? Spiritually it was, but you're right, brother, from that point on, we look at Paul uh, and we see that his life uh, was, was probably, we find that the, the, many of his epistles were written from a jail cell. Uh, and we find that he was beaten, he was shipwrecked. Uh, he, he was, uh, even those who, who, who he thought stood with him, he found uh, they left him. And so there is a pursuit of persecution. And part of being a, a, a Christian is folks don't like righteousness. You know, they're, they're going to want you to, to share in on the gossip. They're going to want you to share in on the sensual, the sexual, the immoral stories and, and the tales. Uh, and uh, oftentimes, when you say, I'm not being a part of that, uh, you're ostracized. Uh, you're mocked. You're, you're ridiculed because of that. Uh, you, you set your standard of, uh, of trust and conviction and belief in the authority of, of God Almighty that He is able to keep and sustain you. God's able to move in circumstances beyond uh, your, your control. And, and oftentimes, uh, people laugh and, and mock you. Sometimes advancements are passed over you because of, of, of your, your, your trusting. But there is a pursuit of persecution that follows those who live righteous. The Word of God says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness. The Bible says that we should hunger and thirst after righteousness. For we will be filled. There will be a filling of, of the righteousness of God. But there will be a progressive suit, uh, a pursuit of, of that which would persecute us. How about the painfulness of persecution? Is persecution, is it polite and courteous? No, I, I would say definitely not. And so uh, it, persecution it involves cruelty. It involves hurting someone. It, 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 it involves uh, uh, being brutal. It will destroy property. It can destroy body. It can destroy uh, reputations. It can bring death. And so there is the pursuit of persecution. There's the painfulness of persecution. And then there is that persistency of persecution. Uh, 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 it, it seeks victims. And uh, it, it will seek them out until it wants to destroy them. If you remember last Tuesday evening, I presented to you uh, Job, and I, I will be referencing that throughout the month. Well, what did the enemy do? Uh, uh, the devil, uh, he, 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 he knows when someone's trying to do righteousness. If the devil's after you, now we, we had a lady when I was growing up, uh, uh, she would stand up and <coughs> every church service, and uh, this is what she would say. 
Uh, she would say, I thank the Lord for being with me. The devil's been chasing me all week. Praise his holy name. Well, the good news is, and uh, if, if this dear sister could have understood it, and I didn't even understand it then, that was a good thing. The devil was pursuing her because she was pursuing righteousness. And so here it was that Job was pursuing a life of righteousness. Once again, he was being the husband that he should be. He was leading his wife. He was being the father that he should be and sacrificing and being the high priest of his home. He was being that man in community that was being the leader and righteous. And so God took notice of him, but the enemy hated it too. And so the enemy was out to destroy him. He was out to persecute him. I'm just going to be honest, Sister Doc. When I was praying for you, I know what God is doing in your life. And I just felt like even you being sick was an attack of the enemy. I felt that. The devil hates it. The devil hates what God is doing in your life. And so oftentimes when we find ourselves in places, whether it's the enemy, whether it's people, persecution comes because we're seeking righteousness. And that is why we're living in a very complacent church age. Because no one likes the battle of persecution. So if we become complacent and we don't seek righteousness, we don't have to worry about the persecution that follows. And so the cause of persecution is this. He says, for righteousness sake. In 2 Timothy 3.12, uh, Paul writes, and I want to turn there. Paul was talking about um, is fully known by doctor. Uh, doctor, he talks about persecution. He talks about afflictions that came unto him at Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. Lystra. And uh, he said, what, what persecutions I, I endured, the Lord delivered me. Now, can you grab hold of that? And what persecutions I endured. How many of you like the word endure? The Bible says the same who endure to the end shall be saved. There will be a work to hold on to salvation. Amen. There will be a work when we are persecuted that we are going to have to endure until the Lord delivers us. Amen. It may be deliverance on this side of glory. It may not be deliverance till we get the glory. But Paul said this. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. This word seducers here is only used this very one time in the New Testament. And Paul uses it here, amen, and uh, saying that, uh, that, that there is such an effort in a unique and a particular time. It means that when we get close to the coming of the Lord, uh, the, the seduction that is in the last days and, and the seducers. Uh, that, 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 that are doing this seduction and, and persecute. It's, it's bad. He said, deceiving and being deceived. Verse number 12, he said, yes, and all who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Can I read that one more time? Paul said, Yes, and all who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. We're not tolerant. We're not accepting. Those are all the things that we're accused of, brother. But the bottom line is persecution. Because we are not. It's because this cross here to those who aren't saved it is an offense. Would someone look up Galatians 5.11 Galatians 5.11 and read that.
there's an offense to this cross. For those who don't know Jesus, those who don't know the work of the cross, it is an offense to them. Have you ever seen before someone get saved? I remember years ago hearing of a drunk who got saved. And when he got saved, I mean, this guy was a drunk. He'd come home, he, he, he worked, but he, he drank and he'd drink his paycheck away. His family, his, the community knew him as being a drunk. And then he got saved and God delivered him. Everybody's happy, right? You know, people complained about his love and his commitment to God and to the work of the cross. Do you know why? Because now he's seeking after righteousness. And the word of God says, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness. For righteousness' sake, there is a persecution that comes along with living righteous. I don't want to work Sunday. It's a holy day. We live in, in our community, you know, uh, not so much in our community, but in, in, in general. You know, we, uh, you, you drive by the schools and it's not Christmas break anymore. It's winter break. You know why? Because we can't send Christ because it offends people. Anything that involves Christ offends people. You know, uh, you remember that man, uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer? Uh, he stood up for righteousness, didn't he? Hitler, he was offended by Christ. And uh, we find that that, that has not changed uh, from the religious leaders in the time of Christ to where we are now. The name of Christ and that which stands up for Christ and righteousness, it is an offense and people are persecuted for it. But the good news, the Bible says this, but that for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The thing that we have to remind ourselves that when we are persecuted for righteousness sake is that there is a payment that is coming. And we have to remember it may not be in our paycheck here and it may not be in things that we obtain here. But in the word of God, the Bible tells us that there is a royal compensation that is coming because there are kingdom royalties that will be paid out to you and I. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. That there are kingdom royalties tonight. Praise God that are going to be paid out for us when we suffer persecution for righteousness sake. Timothy, Paul writes to Timothy and he says, if we suffer with him, we shall also what? Reign with him. Amen. There are some royalties that are going to be paid out in the kingdom of God. The enemy may fight us. Amen. People may accuse us and come against us. But praise God, if we suffer with him, we are going to reign with him. One day God is going to set up his heavenly kingdom. Amen. Uh, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Amen. And we're going to be a part of that. Amen. Ruling and reigning. Praise God. So sometimes we have to remind ourselves that I'm not working for what I'm getting now, but I'm working for eternity. God help us in the church to want to live holy and sanctified. Even those of us that are cost that's involved in. That will pay the price because there's a payday coming someday. Not only is there a royal compensation, but there's a rich compensation. You know, royalty is not poor. God is endowed with all things. And we may lose on this earth but in heaven, we will gain more than what we've ever lost on this earth. Praise God. My mom, when I was home in West Virginia, she gave me a newspaper article to read about John Martin. 
who's up in his nineties. Some some have had the pleasure of seeing him at youth camp that you may not remember. But John Martin was a man who he said that he was involved in World War II. He said it was there that he made some real promises to God. God, that if you get me out of here, I'll serve you all the days of my life. He said some of it was empty promises. But he said he could not wait to come back home and get to church and serve God. Now, John Martin may not be known to many of you, but there's a few things I want to share here tonight. John Martin was seeking the Holy Ghost. He worked in the mines. Kind of carefree, he picked up a bucket of nails and he took home with him. Not that he was trying to be dishonest or stupid, but he did. He said as he was seeking the Holy Ghost, he said he sought the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in other tongues. He said he wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost. He said all he could see was that bucket. So he took it back to work with the dust and he gave it to him. Come back to revival the next night and guess what happened? He got filled with the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues with him. But can I tell you that when I was a young man, oh, it's going back a few years now, when I was a boy about 10 years old, John Martin was in his 40s and his wife had left him because he served. So he set off the box for the Holy Testament. Free gospel Bible ones. Can you imagine when we were there in the 40s? I could. God help me, but that's just the truth. There's some things you do when you're young, and it's good to do them while you're young, right? I believe Bible school's one of them. But he went. And old John never had an seen a lot of people go there who stood up for righteousness when folks were offended, made fun of him, left him. But guess what? John's still serving God. In and one day, Brother Martin will enter into the haven of rest. And nothing he lost on this side of eternity will compare with all the things that he gained on the other side of the church. You know why? Because when we suffer for righteousness sake, ours is the kingdom of heaven. God repays so much more. It's a righteous compensation. You see, the Word of God tells us to lay up treasures in heaven where moth and rust, it can't corrupt them. And where our treasures is there, our heart will be also. It's easy to become complacent as a believer because we don't want to suffer persecution. It's easy to get in the mode of preaching a gospel that becomes... Uh, correct contemporarily and, and, and does it talk about a life change I've talked to some old saints over the past couple of, uh, 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 of weeks and they've said to me they've, they've questioned me and they said what is it that people are saved from anymore when we got saved as young people, we got saved from this world. We got saved from the world system, from the world's way of thinking. When we got delivered into the righteousness of God and we pursued, we, we pursued the holiness of God, God is still looking for men and women who will pursue after righteousness. See, when Jesus gave us these beatitudes, the first couple... Of the, of the Beatitudes, they, they, they help us recognize our own unrighteousness. We look, we're, we're poor in spirit. We see that we mourn. There's nothing we can do at times. We are unrighteous within ourselves. 
And then we go on and we read the next five uh, uh, where he talks about blessed are the meek for they shall inherit. Blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure, pure in heart. Blessed are the, uh, the peacemakers. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness. Say, uh, all of these begin to do with seeking and reflecting the righteousness of God. God wants us to seek and reflect His righteousness. When folks see us, they may misjudge us, they may persecute us, but in the end, may they see the reflection of the righteousness of God in us. The attitudes, their virtues about how we should conduct ourselves even though we will suffer, if you would, vexations of a living righteous. God, help us to put on righteousness. Spiritual warfare is real. Have we learned to fight in the spirit? See, the Lord is honored when we are faithful. So God, help us to be faithful and righteous living. Does anyone have anything that they want to say tonight about righteousness? And seeking righteousness. Being persecuted for righteousness. No, I love it. Tell me your father Floyd. He, he was he thought cool. He thought cool. He thought cool. He thought and they had to move out of the apartment because all we could have lived here it was persecution. And the boy said, God has something better for us. Persecution proves the reality in, of the true church. I can't remember. I'm trying to remember. It's been so, so long since I used it in Sunday school. Um, but I think it was over somewhere around China where there were about 120 um, ministers that were martyred for the sake of Christ. If you go, and it's been um, several years now, I think they toiled for like some like 10, 12 years. But if you go to where they were now, now there was about 120,000 churches. And it's just the fact that persecution is not pleasant. But it's like Tertullian said, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. Persecution brings out true Christianity and sets us apart from all the other quote-unquote Christians in the world. Because the fact of the matter is, if something's false, people aren't going to stick with it. And that's one of the most outstanding things about the early churches. If it would have been false, they would have had to believe their own lie because when you get down to the basis of it, their fact was based on women, which was a joke in their time because they could never be believed. Um, yet these men were willing to die for the sake that their Savior rose from the dead. Also, if it would have been a lie, what man would have died for a lie? Yet all of them were willing to die for the sake of Christ. One of the things in my reading that I read Mm -hmm. Know that the tides are swiftly changing. 